Welcome to same table, different number of fields in AL. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, I've been working, thinking, er, experimenting about a um, about a concept, um, and I thought I, I would invite you guys along, and then you know, comment below and all that. Uh, tell me if I'm, I'm mad. Tell me if this is a good idea. Anyway, yeah, I enjoy all your comments, especially when they're kind. Um, so the challenge, because at, you know, most cases I need to solve something, and 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 this is what I want to solve. I want to I want to enable a a good way to import staging tables, um, and and I I got a couple of different projects, and in in. All of them, there is a, there's a lot of data in a lot of tables, uh, and I need to get all this data into into Business Central, and that'll probably be through my BCCL tool because hey, that's pretty good at exactly that task. But I really do not want to create 100, 200, 300, I don't know how many tables in BC just as staging tables because then I need to manipulate and, and produce PC data out of it. Uh, so I really want to have a efficient uh, staging area that I don't need to, um, it's not too hard to work with, that is efficient enough and uh, that is flexible enough that I, I don't need to spend time on that. I can spend time where it matters. Um, and um, maybe, maybe it's easier if I start showing my prototype of what I've been doing. Uh, uh, and uh, here is here's the table. So what we see here is is a data in in PC. This looks pretty normal. There are right now five columns. One is called table key, and this means that this is the table row key that's a primary key kind of thing and then there's clearly three different fields here and if i do look at filters i can see the table key and row key and i'm going i can only see the city field here and if i look at an available field i don't really see anything that's useful uh, and does not resemble name and address so let me show what this is uh this is because I just published before I started the video. Um, okay, so the main idea here is that I, I want only one table in BC. I want one table that can hold um, whatever. Um, so the base structure is this. I have, I have a single table. This table is right now called document. Um, and, uh, and document has a primary key that is table key row key so whatever table it is and whatever record it is in that table um, then it has storage and uh, and the idea is that a record let's use that term or a document is perhaps a better term because this is kind of a in a in implementations starting to implementing a NoSQL kind of approach in AL. Um, so so there's a record and the record then has fields. Uh, kind of it's also the kind of same concept as a, as a table in Power BI by the way. So we have a storage option and and the idea is that either the all the fields are stored in the blob down here or right now I, I kind of created a I have a set of text fields here so dear the idea was that um, let me show the insert function that that's sorry I'm so bear with me uh, I've been working on this and now I hit record on a video so uh, I may not be that organized uh, but i think it's pretty cool and interesting so here is the insert function um and by the way this is an over so i create a function called insert 
on a on a on a on a table. And you say, let me go here and and here's some insert key. So I have this the record. I'll, I'll get back to this piece, but you see, I just do doc insert, and if I look at what inserts functions I have, there's now four inserts functions on this table. There's the insert with no parameters built in. There's the insert run trigger. There's the insert run trigger and insert with SysMighty. And then there's the new overload. So AL allows you to overload a built-in in function, which was kind of a uh, interesting thing. Um, but let me get back to this one. So here, here is the overloaded insert function. So the insert function takes a table key and a row key and a JSON object. Um, then, so we actually init a, a record uh, and, and, and maybe insert needs to return something here. Uh, it probably should. Anyway, again, I'm just in the middle of this. Um, so the idea is that we get the, the JSON as, as text. And if we are less than 6,144 uh, characters, and that might actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, this might be Unicode, and then we get into, I, I probably need to half this, but, but ignore that, there might be half. The idea is that we have some, some fields here uh, and I'm, I'm probably actually, now that I'm, I'm saying this out loud, I am, because this is Unicode, then I need to half these uh, into 3,000 something characters because that will be 6,000 bytes. So I have not done the math before. It's... Anyway, the idea is that if the JSON object can stay within a page on the SQL Server, then let's not go to the blob, let's just keep uh, uh, keep the the JSON value uh, of, of, of this record of this document in in those easy to access fields uh, if it's larger than the threshold then we'll put it in a blob instead uh, but the blob will require an extra lookup right uh, so a record in this system is the indexing key and uh, let me shut no from my dock. The indexing key and um, and and some storage. Um, so with that in mind, I um, so how do we access? Let me actually show you the, the test page here. So this is this is the page. This is the page you saw here, um, and you can see that. Well, table key and row key are, are fine. Then these two columns are calling rec.field text and rec.field rec.caption. So so we get a so okay, get me the field called name. And by the way, get me the caption for this, if for some reason that should be different. And I added a uh, a, a uh, overload to the caption class uh, stuff called doc. Um, I'll show that in a second, probably. Um, so field txt looks and says, okay, let's make sure that we have values. So low values and low values will go and look and say, okay, do we have a loaded row key? Uh, and loaded means from that aspect means that we have converted from storage into JSON object. Um, so if the the row key we have loaded on this record is different from the row key we're on, I mean that we have done a next or previous or find or whatever, then we need to get it. So depending on the storage where this store, then either we read the object, so the JSON object, we read it from the uh, from the text fields, or we read it from the uh, um, from the blob, and and when we have done that, then we say okay, we got a value, and the one that's loaded is the one we're on right now, um, and that should probably actually have uh, 
let's make an improvement here. This should probably be uh, table key plus row key, and this should be table uh, reg dot table key plus row key, like that. Oh, table key, come on. Um, there we go. Um, then we got the the global variable called object has a value. So my, in this case, our field text now can go and, and say, okay, do we have a field called whatever we call, then return that. Uh, so we could, let, let's actually, exp so we could do, let's do a field decimal here. Field name text has to return a decimal. Uh, oh, maybe we can just copy this guy here. So go here, grab this, and do an as decimal, right? So um, I think, so the data we have loaded right now is basically a dump, a JSON dump of, uh, of the vendor table. Uh, let's see if there's anything. So there's a field called outstanding orders. So let's go to the text page and add a new field. So field, wow. Outstanding orders, break dot field decimal, outstanding orders, application, wow. Application area all, and caption class, just copy that. And that will be outstanding orders. So now we have a new column. Let's see if that works. Boom. So we grab that field out of the JSON um, and, uh, and it became a column, no issue. Easy peasy as someone would say. Um, so, so that is, uh, that is right now the, so, so what, what I'm saying is that let's say that somewhere I need to process this. So, so, so consume this. So we could uh, test consumer. So let's create a code unit here, document consumer. Um, so maybe this is import vendors, right? Let's, let's, let's imagine this is import vendors. Uh, so we have a vendor record and we have our document. There we go. And then we should document set range, table, key, and we want the, the records that are tagged with vendor. Then we should dog if dog find set, then repeat until dog next equals zero. And now you know we could do vendor in it and then vendor dot number equal dog field text. And we need the field called number, right? And and vendor dot name in the dog field text uh, name and so render insert that that that's a pretty simple way of consuming this table it's it's almost ale like uh, uh, this is not the, the exact same syntax as this, but but this is close enough and 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 close close enough to you know, be readable, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and and let's go let's go back and look at the where did I put that the the, uh, the import function I created here. So in this case, I, I do a upload of, of the JSON file, which right now just contains an array. 
Um, so I read that and then I do for each entry in, I think the array here was, so this is just straight array. So I, I create a uh, JSON array called records. So for each T, so the way, so the way you work in, um, like with for each in a, a JSON array is that it's not an object because it could potentially be arrays inside arrays. It could be values inside an array. Uh, so we get a JSON token. And then as I, I in this case, I really don't check for any errors. If errors occur, they, are, they occur. So, so I just take the token as an object and I get whatever field here. So, so there's a, um, I created a um, request page. I think we can actually click on it here. So table key. Um, so I do table key vendor, row key should be the, the field called number in, in, in the schedule. I grab this, this thing and then working YouTube, YouTube something, variables, whatever vendors here. And it gets, gets imported again. Um, where did where did the import thing go? So it imports that, and then I simply doc insert. I get the table key which was was into a parameter. I get t two. So I I I get the uh, whatever I typed as row key. I get that as. Uh, um, as a token again, and I grab that as a value, as a text to insert as a row key, and then just, you know, pass the, the record um, as an object. And by your uncle, it's saved as, as a whatever, doesn't matter how many fields, how, how big, how small the JSON structure. Potentially, you can also have you know, complex structures uh, if, if, if you wanted that. This really don't care about that. Um, so I, I, I started uh, saying, okay, maybe I, I need somewhere to really define. Uh, so, okay, one thing I didn't show you was the, the, the sorting stuff. Um, let's just deploy this one again. Um, I maybe have broken this. You see the city field. Um, and that's probably because now I don't have a value because I ran the importer and the importer uh, set current. Yeah, I, I was, I was. So, the, so here's the idea. Here's what I want to do. Um, is that sometimes it could be necessary for certain because how do you filter on this? The, the main problem with with one of the main problems with this is of course how do you filter on it. Uh, because how do you filter on a JSON object structure? Um, and and what I wanted to do is that I I wa really wanted to see. Uh, hang on, where did where's the document? Here's the document. Um, so basically, I wanted to add one or more fields uh, here. In, in the main structure that is then backed by a key also. So I could designate a certain field in the JSON object to be the sorting field. Uh, so when I call the insert, if there is a sorting field, uh, and I think this is where I, uh, let's see if I added this at all here. So the so the idea is that uh, where's my insert? Where is my insert? Didn't go away. Um, so we probably need to get rid of this one. So so the the idea is that right now I'm just gonna do this non non-optimized and call the same function twice and then we, I can figure out if I need to cache this somehow. So if the there is a helper 
code unit that will remember which field in the structure I want to have as the sorting field. So we set here, set current sort field city. So let's run this again and see if that works. So, so we, we evaluate, evaluate, Evaluate. Why would I say that? We we you no. Know, some fields we we raise up uh, and say, okay, these are these fields will become AL fields also, and thereby real fields. So, and now it actually says city here, and you saw it says city there because I added in. Uh, and overload to uh, not an overload subscriber to the caption class on resolve caption class. So if you say dark and then it gets the whatever. So let's go back in. Let me show how I did this. Um, so this one has a caption class with whatever the sorting field name is right now. And the same if we look at the test page. Right now, we, it just said that the sorting field city. I'm, I'm, I was working on that would go into the uh, a setup table, so we know what the sorting field is for vendor and what whatever other tables we have. But right now, it's just hard coded. Um, so as I look at this and say, this is where we put the sorting field on the page. We just get from the helper. Uh, what what we need for that field so the result is that no it is nice um we could also uh, i'm not going to do that because the video is already too long but what, what i wanted to do is is create a more generic page where it just shows five six columns and and then i would go in here and i'll create something like this and say fuel field 20 um i would do list list fields text something big one uh, uh list fields and then wow then we probably have a document tape list here and then i would add this list fields application wow oh, about six no application error and um i'll go tool tip and say comma separated list of fields for uh for list pages uh, and then simply dynamically build the problem with that is that a uh the type that the, what we did here saying this is a text and this is a decimal that of course goes away it has to be text or anything and thereby left justified um because we cannot have a dynamic type on a column uh so whatever co whatever type a column has at compile time that's how it's going to format unless we get into crazy stuff uh and we don't do this here. I do that elsewhere, but I won't. Um, so going back to my initial <laughs> question, um, what do you think? I think so. So I have. I I am slowly talking myself into that. This is a pretty good idea. This is uh, this is great for what I want to use. That I, I just need to get all this data into staging tables, um, and and then I can uh, I can do what I want with it. Uh, so what I, we haven't talked about here, and and another thing that I, I want to do, if if we go back to um, back to this, so I only implemented insert, uh, but but. Uh, I probably need to set field text. How about that? Um, so field name, text, 
value text. Um, so we need to do object dot. Uh, probably need to do if object contains field name, then object dot replace field name comma value else object dots uh, add field name comma value um, and and if I want to you know, then set date let's do that date and wow formats nicely uh, decimal decimal and so on and then I need a a variant of, of insert so I need to you know procedure so delete is delete delete is simple right but modify uh, how do I overload that because you know this won't work right uh, or, or will it huh. that's probably that's probably an entire video by itself by the way uh, but but in this case we kind of have to go and uh, uh, pretty much grab all this and then I need to f uh, I'm actually going to call this modify rig because otherwise I think it will break a lot of stuff as text text rec two no we don't need rec two we can just do rec here actually still so because we are on our own thing um, in this case it's just object I guess because it's the one we already have in memory um, and we need an outstream to do this thing uh, and we need to update the sorting field also of course I think that's pretty much a um, uh, a modify function totally untested how about that um, but of course before json token before we I, we get i get to an a, an up modify function i probably need to create a an edit record and and uh, i think that's beyond this the time of this video i'm already at 28 minutes so um Let's uh, let, let's stop the madness here. Going back to my question, I am slowly talking myself into that this is a good idea. Uh, I think this will solve all the all the needs that I have identified for the concept of getting. Of course, what what I need in the other end is for BCCL to directly import into this, which. It's, it's no big deal uh, but but from here to consume something like this this seems very very straightforward um, and uh, and and the fact that you know these are these are just tables but in, instead of me having to create 200 different tables and and in in case of a in case of a, a, a variable source because he, here's the thing that that let's say i am consuming the data from 
a product. Let's call it version 18.5. Uh, and there might be a, a set of records there, then that product with version 18.5 might have a version 18.4 or version 17 or whatever that has a slightly different record layout. Um, or maybe there's an 18.6 version coming out suddenly with slightly different. And then I need to maintain all my staging tables, even though that I really don't care about those new fields necessarily. Or if I do, I handle in code. If this this field is there, then do something, otherwise do something else. Um, so it simplifies this intermediary storage uh, thing greatly. And um, I now I spent 30 minutes here doing therapy session with you guys and, and trying to figure out if this still is is this still a good idea and i think it is uh so you know shoot me down in the comments nicely uh if you think i'm on on, on the wrong track here um and uh but remember the golden rule don't leave a comment before you're a subscriber. That's just how it goes. You know, that that's uh, that's YouTube uh, courtesy. And uh, when you're done doing that, then this video has more ale hacking. So go check that one out. It's also a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.